out a crucifix in hand. And Stanley B1 in second place is in the sights of Lofato April in third, who's in the sights of young Kevin Egg in fourth. I see them all right here together in the fight for second, and Kevin looks like he's going to take on April, and very shortly thereafter, he's going to go by B1. So right now, Sagae Kevin Egg is moving into second place, and he's got that half million dollar world marathon major bonus in his back pocket as well. So a great day for this young man from Ethiopia, who just a second now going by Biwat, taking over second place. Mutai, diligent in each stride. As he just, again, very much just pounding out stride after stride to the cheers of everybody here in Central Park. And really, he comes here before the race with the most astonishing confidence after a really quick half marathon just uh, some six weeks or so ago in Italy, John. He's been in fine form. We knew he was raring to go. He has had a couple of problems in his last two marathon attempts. He didn't finish Boston last year. He uh, dropped out of the London Marathon this year with a hamstring injury at around 30 kilometers. He's self-coached, and you know, those sort of little hiccups in your, in your annual cycle can cause some doubts, but he's you know, embedded up there in the Rift Valley in Kenya, where there are literally dozens, if not hundreds, of world-class athletes, plenty of uh, reinforcements and people to, to get advice from. And he, he has come here, nonetheless, despite dropping out of London back in April, with uh, so much confidence, and, and justifiably so. Well, with Prisca and Rita Jeptu, you mentioned their training and, and knowing how strong you've trained with other strong athletes. I mean, training with Wilson Kipsing, September, the world record in Berlin, uh, Dennis Cometto, winner in a fast time in Chicago. So he knew that he had put in the same kind of training and, and you know, that kind of fitness level. It's one thing, uh, to borrow from Herman Edwards, right? If, if you've got a goal but you don't have the training, what you have is a wish. And in this case, here's a guy with a goal and had a training and it wasn't about hope, it was just going out and executing that and, and, and making sure you get to the line and then, and then stick to it, don't go anything crazy and the training takes care of itself. Well, the first American has just entered Central Park some 10 minutes back, Tim Kowalski, we understand, in this men's race. But uh, Joffrey Mutai will join that uh, list of special people who have retained, successfully defended the uh, New York City Marathon title. And he's doing it here, as two years ago, John, the win with the room to spare. Certainly, I mean, there's a certain intimidation Aspect, I think, when you come through and you know who that guy is and train, and you've seen his results as he passes mile 25 now with a nearly one minute lead on the rest of the field. B1, who was with him before, has dropped to fourth. Kip Retenshu was along with Kabede fighting for that $500,000 payday, is currently in tenth, almost three minutes behind. And Kamede, as you mentioned, to put together three very hard marathons in the space of time that he did between London and Moscow and now New York is uh, it's awfully impressive against a guy who, beyond that, was relatively lightly raced. Really, 10 to 11 weeks of recovery and then getting back for this marathon is truly remarkable. And Kamede doing, doing great today. And he just ended Central Park South, but there are different ends of this slide uphill rise. And uh, Mutai can close home from here, John. He's got about half a mile to run. Kibere, yet again, has produced the goods. He is the toughest little character out there. He really is. I mean, there is no doubt at all that if you run the London Marathon in March, then you run the World Championships in sweltering up conditions in Moscow back in August, and then try and go to the well again in November in New York, you are compromising your performance. And even more so, hoping that in Moscow he could have kind of finalized his lead and not have to run here, but then he finishes fourth in Moscow and has to regroup, train again, get his mind wrapped around running one of the biggest marathons in the world, and, you know, beating another guy that's just as good as he is. That's pretty crazy hard. And Jeffrey Mutai, really, he, he spoiled us two years ago when he ran the course record at 2.05.06 because he's probably going to finish under, uh, under the old course record if he had not smashed it himself. Uh, still very impressive run despite the conditions of the weather, temperature-wise, fantastic. The wind, certainly something these fellows had to fight along with the, the 26.2 miles the entire way. 
but in neither race, the women's or the men's, has there been anything like running against the clock, chasing quick times today. They've both been tactical races, really contrasting tactical races. And as uh, we see Joffrey Mutai there at Columbus Circle turning into the park, well, he doesn't need to worry. He's not going to be looking over his shoulder. Tony, how's it looking? Well, Kepity's got a lot of running left in his legs. He's really looking good at what he's doing. He's, he's climbing through the women who have fallen off pace. So he's got people to race in essence. Of course, it's long gone Mutai, but Kevity is putting on many, many steps on the people in third, and it's Rosafo April from South Africa making a big breakthrough who looks like he's going to be on the podium here in New York City. But that, the difference between Kevity and Mutai is one's got two marathons, one's got three. And that certainly started to show it. The 20 mile mark when Mutai decided to go and, and whether he was hesitant or if it didn't allow, he wasn't, you know, there was a bit of insecurity about how much conditioning he had, how much he had in that reserve. To bet he didn't cover that immediately. And while he's running strong now, at the time, didn't feel like he could answer that. And quite frankly, with $500,000 on the line, can you afford to try and cover that move? And, and you, you blow up, and next thing you know, now you're, you're 12. Kibede's done everything right. Kipcic back in eighth place has uh, unfortunately lost his shot at the half million today. Mutai here, not worried about the half million. He was never a player in that. This is his first marathon in 13 months. But he goes up this last little climb here. 100 yards to go, John. And this has been a very comfortable win for Mutai. He actually looks kind of tired, but maybe it's because he knows there is no need to dig down that extra layer of, uh, of, of talent. Of, of strength and speed when he's so far ahead. Mutai was one of those guys that tucked in, let the wind be shielded by him, and he really, I think, benefited from it. And the New York Marathon fans welcome their 2013 champion, Jeffrey Mutai, two hours, eight minutes, 23 seconds after the cannon fire in Staten Island. He arrives in Central Park, breaking the tape, the ING New York City Marathon champion for 2000. And 13. Wow. And Tim, you oh, and I saw him at the opening ceremonies on Friday night. Congratulations. And was That's he it. dancing yeah. through that finish line there? And he <laughs> sure danced today. He was having a blast. Remembering 2011, and now he has 2013 to celebrate as well. And here's Sadaya Kabeni, who has many reasons to be proud of his second place finish. No one to challenge him for the runner-up. Tim, you talk about his consistency now. 15 world marathons, 15 big time marathons, never worse than fifth, always going to be there, reliable effort, and celebrating as he comes just over 209, waving the hat. And he doesn't look too fatigued either, I mean, I may be uh, that sort of uh, 500,000 bucks plus, puts a little bit of extra bounce in his stride over those last so, few hundred yeah. meters. Again, greater, greater with a flag by Mary Wittenberg. But you know what's great is, I mean, these pictures are going out to 160 countries. He's the fifth of 13 children, Kibeda. They'll be punching the air back in Addis Ababa, you can bet, as they will be in the Rift Valley. That is some run from that drill. Safa April comes through. South African. Hurt so good. Hurt so good, John. And there's Mutai going back down the road once he came, That's celebrating. A bit of a That's victory lap. You wouldn't want to take a full victory lap. That's awfully hard to go. A reel across the line as well. He doesn't want to stop. He's in fourth. <laughs> and I tell you what, both are surprising names to fill third and fourth places in a race of this caliber. You know, I, I think you can make a good case for saying this is the toughest men's field ever in New York. And uh, April in uh, third, a reel in fourth. Well, People will be going to their books and saying, who are these guys? They've never had the such high profile in their lives. Yeah. No, you know what's interesting about April? He actually is coached by a woman, her name is Karen Zimmerman, and he's been coached by her since she was, he was 13 years old. Talk about consistency. B. Watts had a tough last few miles. Wow, about 15 minutes ago, he was charging down the road alongside Mutai, and he ends up there, what, in fifth place, and uh, outside 210, around 210.44.